Klein asked me, is it possible to make lots of money authentically? Because it seems like all the people who make a lot of money, or it's not always true, but uh, we tend to think of, um, you know, the especially in my field, right? All the marketers who are like the six, seven, seven, eight figure marketers, they just, they, we know they're making money, but they just don't seem to care about people. They don't care about us. Uh, you may have had this experience where you you buy into a program that sounds really amazing. They make the marketing look so good. And then you sign up and then it doesn't match what the marketing suggests. It's It doesn't live up to the hype, right? So first of all, how do we make a lot of money? Uh, I just want to, I just want to give, make it simple for you, right? Let's say you create an online course that's priced at $250, which is reasonable for an online course, $250. If you average only 167 sales a month, I know that sounds like a lot, but you'll get there um, if you keep going. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm on my way there for sure. If you make 167 sales a month, then you'll be making half a million dollars a year. That's just with one online course, or if you have a bunch of online courses and total, they sell 150, 100, you know, 200 sales a month, then you're making half a million a year. And you might even be providing other services. So you don't have to make that many sales. Long story short, it is absolutely possible, but the part about making it authentically is maybe what what is unique about uh, what I can contribute to you because making money, lots of people talk about it. All right, so let me let me give you kind of three dynamics to think about when it comes to to making money and being successful and being authentic about it or true to your values. Anyway, so the first dynamic is profit versus value. Profit versus value. I, I just, I can't believe that still these days, there are people in my field, marketing experts like me, business coaches like me, who are trying to sell you on the idea of make more profits. You as the solopreneur, most of you watching this are. Now you might say, well, George, what's wrong with making profit? Obviously, there's nothing wrong with it. A profit is needed for a business to be sustainable and to thrive and et cetera. But the problem is it's the wrong focus. Like when you're thinking about making more profit, what are you thinking about? You're thinking about extracting, extracting value from the customer and you're just fixated on profit. It's the wrong focus. I mean, we human beings can only focus on a limited number of things. And whatever we focus on, we tend to channel all of our creativity and energy into, which is why there are so many scammy people in my field because they focus on profit. And so everything they do is focused on manipulation, essentially. they All their energy and actions end up manipulating people um, rather than, I think, making a more beautiful world. So what does it mean then to focus on value instead of profit? So value means how much value can I give to the customer, the client, the participant of my programs? And the more I can give value to them, guess what happens? Well, obviously, the happier they are about my products and services, the more fulfilled they are. And it's just much more likely for them to spread the word about what I do. And ultimately, if you want to make plenty of money and do it sustainably, you have to have plenty of word of mouth happening. You have to have so many people who just rave about your services and products consistently. And that's how, you know, without you having to push, push, push all the time, you can make plenty of money. And the, and the, and the, and the core focus that I'm suggesting here is to shift away from thinking about profit to, to, to towards thinking about value. Now, of course, we look at our bookkeeping uh, on a you know, consistent basis, and we, we look at our actions and go, hmm, which, which of our activities tend to be more profitable, but on a day-to-day -day basis, planning products, planning even our marketing, 
I'm focused on value. How much value in my content as well, right? Like notice my content feels differently than maybe some other people who like you watch a video and then by the end of the video, they're like selling you on a program or something like that. Or you just can't trust most people's content. I mean, in my, in my field anyway, I feel like most people are like, their content is just a thinly veiled sales pitch. Um, and that's not what I do. I mean, I am always trying to give you value in my content. Oftentimes, I don't even mention my courses. Sometimes I do, but it's only out of like, oh, by the way, I also teach this. But it's really focused on the content itself and giving as much value as possible. That's one example. And then the offers, like the, the products and services that you sell, you know, the question is, have you noticed what kind of value it's giving to the customer? Like, are people tell, raving about your services and products? And who is raving about it? The people who are raving about it, you should you should lean into, you know, selling to more people just like that and not worrying about everybody else, right? And the people who are raving about your services, you should find out what is it about your service or your product that makes them so happy. And then you should lean into that to expand those aspects. And so this kind of focus, so for, for example, um, those of you who have worked with my my courses and programs know I'm 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 quite obsessed about feedback. You're like every course, every session, I'm like asking you for feedback. How did it go? How can I improve? And I've been doing it for years. So over the years, I've gotten thousands of pieces of feedback. I I'm not able to implement all of them, of course, but I try to implement a little bit, a little bit, a little bit on a consistent basis so that my services and products get hopefully better and better and better over the years. And so that's continually my focus. How do I bring more value to my clients um, and also in my marketing so that the people that I'm serving, whether they are a paying client or whether they are a free audience member, that they're getting value because the more value that you all are getting, the more likely you're going to, well, the better the relationship we have. And naturally, of course, when you have a good relationship with somebody, you're more likely to say good things about them, right? And that's what true, sustainable word of mouth happens, right? So profit versus value. Don't listen to most of the people in my field who are just making you focus so much on profits. Even their programs are called profit this, profit that. I'm like, oh my gosh, no, we don't need more focus on profit in this world. We need more focus on value. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is pull versus push versus pull. Push versus pull. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Um, so when you make a lot of money, it means you're selling a lot of units of your service or product. Now, if you want to make a lot of money, you're probably, you're probably selling products and not just services anymore. By products, I mean uh, spots in your group program. Uh, sales of your online course, um, you know, versus just providing one-to-one -one services, it's a great start. But eventually you're like, okay, maybe I need to expand beyond one-to-one -to, -one to be able to make um, a better living and one that doesn't, you know, extract so much of your energy. So in order to sell many units, I just said earlier that it really requires a large amount of friendly and, and um, supportive word of mouth. I know you're already getting, some of you, are, many of you are already getting some clients through word of mouth, but you'll notice that it's not enough, right? It's not enough to like get you a full client load and, and to make as much money as you, as you need to. So how do we get more word of mouth? Your product or your service needs to meet the market wants market demand the more that you offer something that the other people want the more that they're going to be pulled towards you rather than you having to push to try to sell hard to try to make yourself look great to try to make your website look amazing to try to make your uh copywriting absolutely you know salivating or whatever like all that stuff excellent copywriting excellent design to me that's push it's not pull now you might say no george i thought Great branding means pull. Great branding is an artificial pull. 
it's an artificial attraction because it's like it's like somebody who dresses really well but they themselves don't have great character you see what i mean versus those who don't dress so well i don't i don't tend to dress very well and um but i'm working on my character i'm always trying to improve the inside i'm always trying to improve um well how much value i give to people around me whether or not i look like i give value on the outside now that's a little bit more patience is required because when people look at me they're not impressed they look at my website not impressed they look at my copy not impressed but then they just keep hearing about me see this is what happens when you have when you have when you give enough value and when you have a system that gives lots of value to people people just keep talking about you all the time they keep talking about you i'm so grateful to have a community of people who talk well about me and so even when someone isn't impressed when they first look at me i guarantee you they're probably going to keep hearing about me from their friends and their support and and, and colleagues and etc and eventually they're going to george didn't look didn't look impressive i didn't like his copy i didn't like his branding whatever looks looks shoddy but i keep hearing about this guy so i'm going to give him a try and once they enter the door wow i mean hopefully <laughs> but they're like oh my gosh your courses or your whatever there's so much better value than what I'm getting elsewhere. I'm paying $1,000 here, $500 here, and that's not as good as the thing I pay for, you know, for your thing for $300 or 150 or whatever it is. And so it's interesting that when, <laughs> because I disappoint at first glance, I disappoint with my first impression. Once they start working with me, it's like they can only go up from there in terms of their expectation, right? It's like, low expectation to start with and then they're like oh my gosh this is great and that's where ironically word of mouth is stronger when you exceed someone's expectations so when your marketing is too good that's a problem it's a problem that's just, i really it's so funny like george you're a marketing coach yes but have you noticed that the marketing i teach you is essentially about you becoming a, a better person i mean the marketing i'm teaching you is about marketing as a minute marketing as ministry marketing as you showing up consistently exercising your creativity fitness so that you become more genuinely adding value to your audience essentially i'm i'm the whole time i'm just trying to help you build a better character build you build build your better habits and build your uh, more of a greater heart of service that's expressed in your content and your offerings that's what i'm trying to do the whole time marketing is uh, that's what authentic marketing is because it's not about you dressing up really well i'm not saying you shouldn't dress up well but it's like when you when you when you look really good on your website or copy or whatever people instantly start with high expectations of you and then they enter and then do the expectations go up or down well hopefully up you know but it's like the the better your marketing the more you have to like exert effort to be able to match or even exceed those ex expectations even more. Whereas when you have bad marketing like me, I'm teaching you how to have bad marketing. No, I'm kidding. No, but when you have consistent and authentic mark, authentic marketing doesn't have to be bad. I, I, I'm being facetious here. I'm making, I'm trying to make light of this, but it's, it's not trying so hard to look attractive and to, um, to, to be to look all get put together essentially and when you can be yourself and practice being yourself publicly without fear which is a practice you become stronger inside you become more authentically powerful which the energy signature that's put out there is going to be deeper of a resonance than a pretty website and amazing reading copy amazing words on your website or your social media or whatever and so this is what i mean by push versus pull like you you can either be pushing 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 to try to push your image out there to make it look amazing and also when you're selling you could be pushing sending lots of emails to try to sell something or you can be working on pull pull -L, which is you show up so consistently that your energy signature has become strong because you have become strong on the inside. To be honest, I think most of us start out really weak on the inside. We have so many self-doubts. We have so much lack of confidence. 
And we, we try to like build confidence through like external things that are like techniques to build. No, I mean, confidence ultimately is about integrity with yourself. You see yourself showing up day after day, even when you don't feel like it. That's when confidence builds. That's when authentic power builds. When you, when you, when you make a plan and you show up and you, you, you stick with your plans to post content, to make offers or whatever, to make net caring, heartfelt connections, even when you don't feel like it, then you become stronger. But when you do it only when you feel like it, you become weaker because you're always, you're, you're becoming more attached to your impulses and your impulses are untrained. They're not wise. It seems natural. It feels natural to you. It feels sometimes even like intuition to you, but it's untrained. It's your lower self tricking you. And so pull means to focus, to, to prioritize the consistency of authentically showing up, which builds your inner power. And also your, um, that's, that's, about, that's about the overall credibility that you have. But then when it comes to your product, your service, pull means to know your ideal customer so well which comes from net caring and making connections and really talking with them, not being so much in your own head, but talking with so many people at such depth that you're like, okay, I, I finally get what they really want. And so therefore I'm going to create something from my authenticity that they want, not just what I want. I'm going to create something, of course, what I want, but also matches because what you want is a hundred things. I mean, you could create probably a hundred different things if you keep on working at it and be, you know, try different ideas. But out of those 100 things, there's only 10 things that other people want enough to pay you for. 90 of the things you put out there, they don't want enough to pay you for. If too few people will pay you for it. But when you find those 10 things that they want to pay you for, that they're excited to pay you for, and you deliver excellent value, then there's lots of pull. People will spread the word, God, like this person, you are providing a service that we want and you deliver excellent value. And lastly, um, and I'll, I'll end here, the third dynamic is future versus now. Future versus now. When you tend to focus on making lots of money, the typical way people teach you, it's so much about the future. Ah, oh, one day I will be a millionaire, billionaire. One day I will have a $100,000 business, $250,000, whatever. It's like, you're thinking about the pile of money in the future versus the now. What do I mean by the now? Right now, you already have some friends who are similar to your ideal clients. Right now, you already have some acquaintances, some classmates. Uh, you've taken my courses or you've taken other courses. You participate in various events. You know people from various things who are similar to your ideal client or know people who are just like your ideal client. You already know these people right now. And so the focus right now is to talk with them more. Too many of us don't talk to enough people. I mean, really, I think <laughs> this, is, this is a real problem. Like many of you are doing things in isolation. You're not talking to enough people. It's really the bottom line. Like it's the people who decide to give you the money because it's what you're providing is what they want. And so you need to be focused on the now, not the future. Oh, one day I will have a big enough audience. One day I will have, you know, um, enough people liking my content and buying my, yeah, that's true. But right now you already have people that you know from your friends, your acquaintances, people you've taken courses with, been part of events with that are similar to your ideal client or who know people like your ideal clients. You need to talk with them now and serve them well now Lean into those connections now from a heartfelt place, not trying to get anything from them, but being genuinely curious how you can serve them or the people they know better. That is the work that most solopreneurs are not doing. They just, they think, oh, George talks about content. I'm just going to create content. I'm going to create offers. I'm going to run Facebook. That's all great. Yes, of course, I do those things too. It's like not enough people just talk to people. I call that market research. Whatever you want to call it is fine. It's essentially talking to people you already know to find out what they might want that you could provide so that you can provide it for them. 
I hope that this has been inspiring for you to see these three different dynamics. Like, okay, let me adjust my energies and my focus to focus on value, to focus on pull instead of push, and to focus on now instead of thinking, oh, I'll have a, enough audience later. Okay. I hope this is helpful. I look forward to seeing if this helps you. Uh, feel free. As always, I, I love seeing comments below. And um, until then, I, I wish you joyful productivity as you go about these things. And thank you for watching. See you in the next video.